Hey everyone, so in today's video I'm going to be telling you how to sex your beta. So in more simpler terms, how to tell if your beta is male or if it is female. The first thing I'm going to do is clear up a few common misconceptions that you might come across when trying to sex your beta. People say that all male bettas have long fins. Now this is not true. There are actually some types of bettas known as placats that have very short fins. Another one I hear way too much is that all females have short fins. The next misconception that you will often hear is that only the male bettas are aggressive. Now this is not the case also. There are some females that are just as aggressive as a male and some males that are actually quite mellow. So just because your betta is flaring doesn't mean they're male. Some people say that egg spots don't mean anything when sexing your betta. If you are sexing a young betta, this is true. There are a lot of young males that will have egg spots. However, once you reach the age of maturity, which is around one year old for bettas, if they still have an egg spot, they are female. So I'm gonna start off with the gill membrane. And the gill membrane is often known as a beard in male bettas. This is the little membrane that is kind of poking out from the gill covers that you can see on Draco here. It's that little flap of skin type thing that um, is kind of flapping around his pectoral fins. And these protrude out of the gill covers in a male and is very prominent. On a female, as you can see through Journey here, she does not have that extra membrane showing. She has her gill covers and she does have this membrane, however on her it is tucked away. So it is not evident. So if you see that there's a lot going on in his gill area, likely you have a male. Next I'm going to talk about the dorsal fin. The dorsal fin is the fin on top of your betta. On a male betta, this fin will be very long and kind of curvy. It will be flowing up and then over the back of your betta, very elegant-like. On a female, it is much shorter and it's, I don't want to use the word pointy, but it's a lot more, it's less flowy. It kind of sticks out a little bit more, it doesn't flow down over the back. As you can see on Draco here, it is going up and kind of curving over his caudal fin. However, on Journey, it doesn't really touch her caudal fin at all because it is so short. So that is one way to tell whether you have a male or a female based on their dorsal fin. Now this kind of brings up the misconception of fin length when you come to the caudal fin. And the caudal fin is the fin on the back. A lot of times if you see the long flowing fin, you automatically assume it is male. So this kind of depends, but in general, looking at a veil tail here like Draco, the, it's not very shaped, it doesn't have any specific shape, it just kind of drapes down and then comes to a little bit of a curved point at the end. If you look at Journey here, my female, you can see that although she does have a longer fin because she is a long fin female, her tail is still shaped quite differently than Draco's is. Instead of hers draping right down, hers kind of comes to a point, it's almost like a spade shape, like if you were looking at a game of cards. On a short finned female, it is much more evident this shape. However, you can still tell that the shape of the fin is very different and it is very easy to tell based on the shape that she is a female. Now you may notice that most of the fins on a male are all kind of the same description. If you look at a female betta, her anal fin will be sharp, it'll be angular and will again come to a point. It won't just flow down. So if you look at Draco here, you can see that his anal fin is much longer and although it does come to a slant at the bottom, it is a slant, it's not very sharp. So that is one way to tell if your fish is female based on their anal fin. For when you compare it to Journey's anal fin, it is very easy to tell that hers is kind of much sharper, it's much more of a prominent line opposed to a curve. Now looking at the ventral fins, these are the fins that come down from the belly of your betta. Now if you look at Horatio, you can see that his ventral fins are very long and they're shaped like a blade, like they look like a knife. And that is one way to tell a male betta's ventral fins. However, if you look at Journey here, who is female, you will see that her ventrals are shorter and they're very thin. It's kind of like a string. If you are looking at your betta and you're looking at his ventral fins, and that you see that they are blade shaped, then you likely have a male. If you see that they are short and very skinny, then likely you have a female. Now, if you're still struggling to determine the sex of your betta based on your fins, there's a lot of ways to tell the sex of your betta based on its body shape. If you look at the stomach area of a male betta, it is relatively flat and smooth all the way down. There is no protruding stomach, unless of course your betta is bloated or is constipated. Now your betta, even if she's very regular, she will still have a bit of a protruding belly. So if you notice that no matter how much you fast your betta, she still has a little bit of a belly, then you may possibly have a female. 
Now, another way to tell based off the body is head shape. If you look at a male, their head will be kind of pointed on the top. There'll be a little bit of a hump on top of the male's head. If you look at the head of a female, her head will be more smooth. There'll be more of a slant going down. There won't be that peak on the top of her head. And now here comes to the controversial eggs thought. If you were sexing a very young betta, then you may have difficulty using this as a point, as I said in the beginning. However, if you are looking at your betta that you got from the store, it is probably six months of age or older and is past the age where males would have an egg spot. If you look at your betta in between its ventral fins and you see a tiny white dot, this is known as the egg spot. Male bettas cannot lay eggs and that is what this egg spot is for, hence the name. Therefore, if you have a betta that is male, they will not have this spot. If there is nothing there, there is no white dot, there's no protruding belly, you're dealing with a male. Now the last one that's based off of appearance, and that is the color of your betta. This is not a determining factor, however on average, you will find the very colorful bettas most often being male. And like Journey here, she is relatively pale, like I don't think you can get any less color. They're not, you can't, you can't see the round ball.